Hello. In this video, we are going to model the hexagonal primitive 0, 0, 0, 1 and the hexagonal closed packed 0, 0, 0, 1 plane. Three of the four required vectors are coplanar. Here they're labeled as A1, A2, and A3. And each of these is 120 degrees from the other. These three vectors also correspond to a displacement of a distance equal to A. So the projection in this distance is A along the vector A1. In this direction, along the vector A2, the distance is A. And the distance in this direction, along vector A3, is the distance A. But the fourth vector, a4 in our diagram is orthogonal to A1, A2, and A3. So it's up and down in our diagram. And the projection in this direction is a distance C. Here we have the so-called like top plane, top face of this hexagonal prism. And this is our 0, 0, 0, 1 plane. And we see that it has hexagonal structure. But also within it, as we've seen with other structures, we see that it's built up by a series of equilateral triangles. And just as we can think of a hexagonal unit cell, we could also break it down into a rhombohedral cell where the length of each side of the rhombus is A. And if we were to draw another line here, remind us that this length is also A. So, each rhombohedral unit cell can be thought of as two equilateral triangles joined together along one edge. Recall that, for example, in the face-centered cubic 1, 1, 1 plane, which resembled this, that the distance between two atoms was the square root of 2 over 2 times A, sometimes written as a divided by the square root of 2, whereas in the hexagonal system, our parameter for the distance between two atoms is our length a. The hexagonal close packed system is a structure that is the most efficient packing system if we consider the atoms to be hard spheres. It is just as effective as the cubic close pack system, which is another name that is often applied to the face-centered cubic system. So the two most efficient packing systems are FCC, CCP, and HCP. And we can think of the hexagonal close pack structure from the hexagonal primitive structure simply by, if we think of one of the rhombohedral unit cells, that in the center, so exactly in the center of the, for example, upper right triangle here, we have an additional atom of exactly the same type as the black atoms here. They're just drawn as blue here because they are not on the same plane as the atoms that are colored in black on the 0, 0, 0, 1 plane. They are below the surface. And how far are they below the surface? Well, since the height of this prism from one layer to the next is C, and we know that this atom is exactly halfway in between, its height above the bottom plane must be one half of C. So C over two, C over two, C over two height for these, whereas the height is zero or C for the black atoms. If we're looking down on the HCP 0, 0, 0, 1 plane. This particular projection is also helpful in demonstrating the packing scheme of HCP. The atoms that are represented in black, we think of the capital A layer. Then the next layer, slightly different position, is the B layer. And then the next layer above that is directly over the first layer A. So we have capital A, capital B, capital A, capital B system. And we can see this clearly because this is capital A, the blacks, and then the blue colored dots are the capital B layer. So this is, we can remind ourselves that the 
stacking layer A is in black, whereas the stacking layer B is in blue, and hexagonal closed pack gives us this alternating pattern. Recall that the stacking pattern for the face centered cubic, cubic closed pack, was ABC, ABC. So while hexagonal closed packed and FCC have equal efficiency at packing, the way that they are packed is slightly different. One last feature to keep in mind is that in a hexagonal primitive system, the ratio C divided by A is always greater than 1 because the system is set up so that C is greater than A. In the case of hexagonal closed pack, the C divided by A numbers will be very, very similar, but not exact. Again, recall that even though we are using an inexact approximation to uh, generate our hexagonal structures, that the, uh, the values we're using are very close to the theoretical values, and the values we find in experiment actually vary more from the ideal than the approximations that we have used. So we're at least as accurate as nature, if not more, in using our LEGO projections to model hexagonal closed packed 0, 0, 0, 1, and the hexagonal, hexagonal primitive 0, 0, 0, 1. Here we can see that the distance between atoms is the parameter A, which is equal for all three sides, so that it gives us a overall pattern of equilateral triangles, and we can see the overall hexagonal symmetry. Since we are modeling the hexagonal primitive 0, 0, 0, 1 case here, what we would see is below each of the atoms of the surface, below that directly uh, in the opposite direction on the other side of this particular atom, for example, there will be another of the exact same type at a distance C below here, then a distance of 2C, distance of 3C, for example, because that is the parameter in the up and down Z direction is our displacement C. And we would notice that if we were to do the same thing exactly in the center, of the equilateral triangles. No matter how far we were to go, we would not run into another atom. So directly over below this point that we're showing here, or any of the interior points of the equilateral triangle, there will be no atoms they will find at a distance below of C or 2C or 3C in the hexagonal primitive structure. That's important. In the primitive, there'll be nothing below in this region. Here is the same lattice, but now we're describing it with a rhombohedral unit cell, and we see that the length of each side of the rhombus is our parameter A. Now, for contrast, we have the HCP0001 structure, which at the surface seems identical to the hexagonal primitive case, but we notice drawn on our figure here that we have these gray dots. And these represent other atoms of exactly the same type as we have at the surface, but these are below the surface by a distance C over two. So if we consider the gold colored atoms here to be the A layer, then the atoms that would be at these gray positions would be the B layer. So we have this alteration of A, B, A, B as we go through a distance C, that parameter C, from the hexagonal and the hexagonal closed pack systems. While it would be possible to more thoroughly 
uh, model the HCP surface. One of the difficulties we have in trying to model this particular atom, we know that it's a distance of C over 2 below the surface, but the bigger problem is that the exact location of this point doesn't correspond to one of the studs in LEGO. So one way to get there around that would be we could model the HCP system, but changing the, uh, the scale that we use. But for the time being, so long as we've been able to model uh, all the surfaces so far using identical materials, I think that emphasizes the, uh, helps us to compare and contrast all the surfaces. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.